uh, in this video I'm going to talk about all the components needed to do this yourself including if you have 6FL and you want to try to uh, integrate your steering wheel controls and stereo controls with the with the car as I did here so here I am driving along by far my one of my favorite features of uh, uh, doing this uh, screen mirroring project is uh, actually playing YouTube playlists while you're driving I can literally be playing a video I loaded up a playlist I'm gonna hit next it literally just changes to a new video it, this actually works smoother and more seamlessly than Spotify you may get the odd ad here and there but they're usually not too long and uh, well, you know that's what it looks like at night plenty bright and uh, so it's gonna load up the next song I'm just on the highway right now driving because I have good uh, Wi-Fi. I have good uh, LTE where I am right now. I change tracks. There you go. I don't have the audio turned up obviously because of uh, copyright, but it sounds really good, really crystal clear. Change tracks. Loading up a new uh, new video. And it sounds literally great. And uh, if I were to pause it, let's push this in. Boom, it pauses it. It's pretty sick. If I press it again, unpause. It's like part of the car, it's crazy. I love it. But, uh, so anyway, by far, uh, like you don't even need Spotify with this. You literally just set up a Chromecast. You load up a playlist, cast it, and it's tethered to your phone, and you got videos and music all day long that sounds crystal clear. I just change tracks. There, just hit change track. Got another one loading up, it's really quick. It's pretty freaking awesome, all things considered. And the quality is awesome, it looks really good. Change tracks again. So for the most part, my uh, LTE on the road is like really good. I have good, strong LTE. I have Sprint now unlimited. So if you're just sitting on a drive-through board, like YouTube works so seamlessly. It's just instantaneous. It's better than casting Spotify, funny enough. And you don't even need a subscription for it. So I'm just loving it. It's crazy how nice it's working, how hard of the car it feels. I'm changing tracks with steering wheel controls. I can pause the video right now and just boom, hit the pause, hit the power button on the stereo, it's paused. K8 and. That's my uh, radar. So, literally loving it. It's been awesome. Just a quick audio test. Okay, so the video interface module that I purchased, from what I had found, it's actually just a rebadged uh, generic part number that a bunch of different uh, manufacturers put their stickers on. So I bought one called the X-Car Link. I'll show you the link on eBay that I purchased it at for about 230 shipped US. So that's the part number there, PIP-BM-1110-008. If you just click on images, it doesn't really take you directly to it, but you now, for instance, this company Car Solutions make it. Um, 
they range in price. You'll find them all over the the web, but that's what it is, vault, multimedia video interface with CAN bus. It's going to support picture in picture and all that. So that's the generic part number and I'll show you the exact link that I purchased. So this is it here, um, made by Xcarlink. I offered 180 Great Britain pounds and it came in about a week. It's made by Xcarlink and uh, I don't know. I'm sure if you can find it for a similar price. Worst case, you have to pay the 220. But uh, I'll show you the company that uh, put their sticker on this module. So this is xcarlink.com. Um, they sell the actual video interface module, and you can have a bunch of add-ons. You can get directly from them, just to give you an idea. This is the HDMI to RCA uh, video adapter that I purchased because uh, I've tried a couple and the quality varies quite a bit. This particular one is rated pretty high on Amazon and it worked out for me. As you can see, I demonstrated in the videos. It's pretty clear. So I'd recommend this particular brand. I wouldn't try the cheapest one you can find because you can find them for like 13 bucks, but the quality varies quite a bit. I bought the following uh, noise filter for my uh, reverse camera because I was getting a bit of noise on the positive line. So this cleaned up the picture for me. I bought the following uh, bullet charger to power the Chromecast and to power the the video interface module. Uh, you want to make sure you get one that has at least a 2.1 amp input, or sorry, output to power the Chromecast, and the one amp output can actually power your uh, HDMI to RCA adapter. I bought this uh, reverse camera. Um, you find them, you can just search up this generic description, you'll pull like tons of listings. I paid $12 uh, shipped with Prime. So that's the reverse camera that's on my car. I'm running a second generation Chromecast and uh, you, know, you find them quite commonly anywhere really. You can find them at Walmart. I bought mine at Walmart. They sometimes drop to 25 bucks. You can get them for 30 bucks on eBay. So you're going to need a Chromecast, you're going to need a bullet charger to power it, you're going to need the HDMI to RCA adapter to actually feed video into the video module that I showed you from Xcarlink, and um, the reverse camera to feed into the reverse camera input. You tie into CAN bus on the car, and um, you can control through your steering wheel controls the if it's going to be full screen half screen and toggle it on and off this is the wma 3000b the bluetooth streaming device that's allowing me to uh, connect to my car steering wheel controls and toggle and change tracks on spotify as well as youtube uh, playlists so this is optional your car would have to have the 6fl package but I'm just showing it here if you want to basically mimic what I'm doing on my car. I don't think you can usually find it for cheaper than this, but it's a good value overall. If you have 6FL, you tap into the USB port, and then your steering wheel controls can help control changing of tracks, pausing your music, etc. One thing I forgot to mention is uh, I show you how to install all this stuff as well, and I show the whole procedure in this series uh, so just look up my other videos for Android screen mirroring I go over everything and what it takes to install this from scratch so if you found this video and you're wondering about how you're gonna do all this just look on my channel you'll find uh, other videos showing me installing all of this stuff and what I did how I fed uh, RCA out audio out off of the HDMI adapter right into my auxiliary port on the car and how it all ties in so just look out on the channel for how to install this including the wiring and everything needed to install the interface module and tap into CAN bus and everything you'll need to know so that will pretty much do it that's everything you're going to need to be able to uh, set this up the not everybody's going to have 6FL I understand that I'm going to show in another video a uh, Bluetooth uh, gamepad that I bought for like 8 bucks that maybe you can use as a an alternate uh, way of controlling uh, music and whatnot. Maybe you'll find that handy. Um, so that could reduce the cost. Uh, but if you want exactly what I have, you'd have to add the cost of this in.
but if you didn't want that you know you could do this around three hundred dollars total and I'd highly recommend it I've been using it for Google Maps Spotify YouTube and pretty much any other app you could launch on your phone if you could find it handy you can run it on your um, you can run it on your screen so that pretty much summarizes everything you're going to need to mimic the project. I tried a few different things and a few different angles and this is what I ended up at. It's definitely, you know, it's not plug and play, but it's stuff you can buy off the shelf and integrate onto your car. So that pretty much summarizes everything you're going to need to do this yourself. And stay tuned for the video where I uh, try out that gamepad to see how that's going to work out. So thanks for watching and good luck. <laughs>